In the 21st century, relationships are really challenging, and the paradigm of monogamy really has been challenged by many couples. We see a lot of permutations, combinations. Recently, the Supreme Court uh, recognized gay and lesbian marriage as valid in our country, and we're seeing relationships being challenged, and the concept of monogamy really is brought to the forefront. And many clinicians really do not have the clinical tools, communication, understanding about how to address this topic. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Critchman, host of Sex Med on ReachMD. Joining me today is world-acclaimed clinical sexologist, uh, psychologist, and sex therapist, Dr. Marion Brandon. She's in private practice in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, Marianne, thank you so much for joining us today. I know your book, Monogamy, The Untold Story, is really a favorite in my library, uh, and I've read it multiple times. I find it quite fascinating. I wanted to just jump right in, really, and uh, have you talk about, you know, why is it so hard for professionals to discuss this topic, and how did you really become interested in in this topic per se? How did it become such an important issue? Well, you know, those are great questions. I think it's difficult for professionals to discuss uh, the issue of monogamy with their patients for a couple of reasons. One is there really aren't clear solutions to the, to the dilemma of monogamy or the problem of monogamy. So um, when treaters don't have sort of a clear, concise plan, uh, treatment plan to offer, um, it's more difficult for them to bring it up. It also taps people's personal challenges because everyone is in a relationship or has been in one and has found their own struggles you know, with the issue of monogamy. So it can tap people's personal struggles. It taps moral issues and religious issues. So it feels like a hot topic for um, professionals, and they tend to avoid it, which is really unfortunate because if, if we are modeling you know, denial and avoidance, with our patients, we can't really expect them to deal with these challenges in an adequate way. Um, I can tell you how I got into this um, arena of writing about monogamy and working with my patients around it is that I was initially a clinical psychologist without a specialty, a general psychologist, and um, I sort of fell into the field of sex therapy. It was not my intention. And when that happened, my practice really filled up with couples who um, we're dealing with a couple of issues so frequently. One was um, low libido. One person wasn't really um, wanting to have sex with the other. And the other one was affairs, people stepping out or wanting to step out of the relationship. Um, and I saw as the years went by and repeatedly working with people, therapy is very intimate. You get to know them very well. I started to see that what I learned in school, and even what I learned uh, as I became a sex therapist, wasn't necessarily holding true. These people weren't all ill. They weren't all narcissistic. They didn't all have attachment problems. They weren't all in bad marriages. Um, so I could see that we were not answering the, the, we were not dealing directly with at least a subset of the population that struggled with these issues of affairs and low libido. And so that's what led me to, to further kind of expand my thinking and brought me to um, anthropological literature and zoological literature, you know, that's what brought me here then to this place that we need to deal more directly with this monogamy challenge. And what do you think that challenge is? Can, can couples really navigate those issues of monogamy, non-monogamy? Um, you know, I see it certainly as a, a, a sex therapist as well. I think that sometimes it's challenging, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So what are your thoughts about why some couples can navigate it easily, why others can't? Is it related to orientation? Uh, is it more common in heterosexuals, uh, same-sex relationships? Why do some people and some couples sail through relationship issues like open relationships or multiple partners or even the concept of non-monogamy and still have successful emotional connections where they separate sex and love and intimacy where others completely fail? What do you think the issues are? Those are great questions, you know, and there are so many variables, I think, at play. Some are simply personality variables. Uh, some people um, are, are more jealous. Some people are less jealous. Some people 
um, find sex more important. For some people, sex is less important. Um, some relationships are built on um, uh, communication and emotional closeness more than sex. Other relationships are, are kind of oriented differently. All these things can, can play into how couples are successful, uh, uh, for example, with a non-monogamy agreement. Also, people's peer group. If, if a relationship is part of um, a group of friends who sort of approaches relationships in the same way, they'll feel supported in the, in the choice that they're making. So that, that can have an impact as well. Plus, things can change for couples over time. So, so often, um, uh, one sort of arrangement will work really well for a couple for five years or ten years, and then they need to sort of readjust. Um, and if a couple is flexible in their approach, uh, I think they have more staying power. Right. And how do you help them navigate those issues? And what are the misunderstandings? I think those are the big issues because very often what I see is one partner wants uh, more uh, variety, uh, wants non-monogamy, wants to step out of the marriage in terms of sexual function, but really wants the other emotional connections, as well as enjoys uh, intimate relationships with their own partner. So what are some tools and what are some misunderstandings that people have? Well, you know, I always tell all of the couples I work with, um, first off, that any relationship structure they choose is going to have significant challenges. That goes for monogamy and that goes for non-monogamy. So there isn't an option that is risk-free or challenge-free. So everyone sort of starts in the same playing field that way. Um, and I also talk to people about, uh, very realistically, how challenging um, monogamy is for folks. You know, we look at the statistics on divorce. Fifty percent of marriages are divorced. Twenty percent are sexless. A third or more of people are having affairs. So when you put a very realistic, um, when you start with a realistic approach of how challenging long-term relationships are, I think it does bring people into a place of more flexibility and understanding um, in dealing more uniquely with their, their particular partnership and what's going to work best for them. I think that a great misunderstanding um, is that folks that go the non-monogamy route are ill or their relationship is distressed or, um, you know, that relationship is destined to fail. These are all untrue. Research demonstrates repeatedly that the folks in non-monogamous relationships are equally satisfied, they're equally emotionally healthy, they don't have more rates of sexually tr transmitted diseases. I mean, everybody really is pretty much the same. You know, I appreciate that input, and I think there's really a lot of misunderstandings about relationships in general, and I think that many people feel like relationships really should be on autopilot. And I, I really uh, take to heart your concept that, you know, monogamy versus non-monogamy both have challenges uh, in everyday life. You know, stress, fatigue, work, financial issues, as well as relationship partner communication issues. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Sex Med on ReachMD. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Critchman. Joining me today is author and clinical psychologist and sex therapist, Dr. Marion Brandon. She's in private practice in Annapolis, Maryland, the author of Monogamy, the Untold Story, as well as her latest uh, ebook, Unlocking the Sexy and Surrender. Uh, Marianne, before we conclude, I just wanted to kind of reiterate the concept of relationships and communication. I think the fundamentals really are very important, whether you choose monogamy or non-monogamy, and very often that's the number one issue. So what are some clinical pearls? Uh, if I'm a clinician listening to this and really interested about helping my patients help themselves about relationships and communication, I know I have some tricks of my sleeve. I tell them, you know, go on a digital fast, turn off the iPhone, the iWatch, the iPad, and connect over dinner. Face-to-face uh, -face communication, not sticky notes or texting communication often helps as well. What are some clinical pearls that the everyday clinician can give to their uh, patients to help them improve the communication and maybe broach the topic of non-monogamy? Um, first, I would say 
I encourage couples to schedule time together um, because life has such uh, can go so quickly and take over and sort of run our lives. So to take control of the, the communication means oftentimes scheduling time for communication. So um, taking time every week, maybe in a regular pattern or not, to talk about more intimate topics. I also encourage my couples to, to remember that knowledge is power. If they don't talk about what their struggles are, the struggles are probably just going to get worse. Things are probably going to become, they're going to become less intimate, um, and the struggles will just sort of gain momentum. So in spite of the fact that these conversations can be so difficult, it, it does enable, does empower them to find solutions and compromises that they otherwise cannot find if they're not speaking. I mean, that sounds really good. I wanted you to, you mentioned something about a non-monogamy agreement. And I think this, you know, fundamentals of communication are really important. Tell me a little bit about that. And what uh, should I know if I'm talking to patients and or uh, if a patient is listening? What is a non-monogamy agreement and what are the aspects that are really important to include? Great. Okay. So a non-monogamy agreement um, is unique for each couple. And what they do is determine what the rules they need to, to ensure to have in place for each person to feel comfortable as they branch out in a different way, um, in, in a different sort of, of, of intimate relationship. So a non-monogamy agreement um, should initially be uh, on the fairly conservative side so that couples can kind of ease their way into a new relationship pattern. So rather than just saying, we're going to go from you know, sexual monogamy to you know, you just do what you want whenever you want. That's a big step. And so instead of taking such a big step, you sort of break down what's an, an initial step that, that the couple can experience and then talk about and see how it goes and then change the agreement again. So it's sort of an ongoing, it's, it's, it's alive. The agreement is alive and, and people experience the shift and then discuss it. Um, so I encourage couples to go slowly, uh, and that agreement, they can even put it in writing, and that, 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 that can be helpful because their emotions run high when couples are trying to make a shift. As much as they both want to make a shift, it's still a challenging emotional time for them. So when people are highly emotional, they, they don't necessarily hear accurately what the other person is saying or they'll misinterpret. So putting things on paper can make it much more clear. Um, and it, that can feel safe for people. They can look back at the agreement and know um, this is all that's going to happen, and uh, then we're going to talk about it. Right. And what I recommend is, you know, when people are embarking on this non-monogamy uh, agreement is that they each do it separately and uh, kind of feel out what they feel comfortable with and without including and then they come together and kind of negotiate the terms, almost like a business deal and transaction. So everybody feels they're giving, they're taking, they're feeling satisfied at the end and not really being pressured into agreeing on one thing or another. Marianne, I'd like to thank you so much for being with us today. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. We've been talking about monogamy, the challenges of monogamy and non-monogamy, as well as communication in your relationships. I'm Dr. Michael Critchman. You've been listening to Sex Med on ReachMD. Be sure to visit our website at reachmd.com slash sexualmedicine to download this segment and others in this series. And remember, sexual health is general health. I'm Dr. Michael Critchman, your host, and you've been listening to Sex Med on ReachMD. Thank you again for listening.